All right. Thank you so much, John, for chatting with us today. Um, I, on a personal note, John and I um, connected and my sisters and I were kind of going around the community and trying to meet people like-minded businesses and came across John. And it was just one of those times where it was like an immediate connection. You just felt aligned with someone on their their personal health and lifestyle values. So um, I figured if we like talking to him that much, then it's only fitting that we have him as a guest on the podcast. So John, welcome to the Fit Phoenix podcast. Um, thank you so much again for being here. I'm excited for people to hear what you have to say. Hey, thank you, Amy, for the just the opportunity to be here on the show with you guys. And just uh, seems like it was just a little while ago we met, but I know it's been almost like almost a year, years. which is, uh, I think almost a year, but still shocking yeah. time yeah. needs to slow down. Um, okay. So started off by just telling us a little bit about what you do now and maybe kind of how you got there. Um, as everyone's familiar with, I kind of, um, intro John already, but he is a stretch therapist. Um, but I'm going to let you tell us a little bit more about what's that, what that means, because I think it's that you do something that's a little bit more elevated than what your title describes, in my opinion. Sure. And I'm, um, oh, my wife, she always gets mad at me because I just say, ah, I just stretch people, you know, and it's, it's been one of the hardest things is to convey to people precisely the depth of what it is, you know, um, that's why you're here, John <laughs> movement specialist, the flexibility coach and, and really, I see it more as a coach, just helping to guide people through this journey of life to feel better, move better. Um, then I got started 21 years ago uh, when I first moved here to Phoenix from Idaho, small town, and went into personal training and just had this, just this thought that stretching had to be more sophisticated, had to be better than what I did playing sports, which I'm sure all of us that were born before Absolutely. Bend 2015. Over, touch your yeah, toe you know, and count to 30. <laughs> yeah, that was it. We go play. <laughs> and um, so that, and the, the precise moment was this uh, trainer at the independent, he was an independent contractor at the gym I was at. It was a family owned gym. So this, you know, so I just turned 21. This guy, right, I can still picture him clear as day. He was the Army that. Master Trainer. Um, he had a American Academy of Sports Medicine certification, which is the gold standard for the industry. Yep. Um, you know, he was an old guy. He was like 45 maybe and had glasses. And I was like, all right, this guy's been, he knows he's been what he's through doing. It. He knows. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I asked him one day, I was like, what do you think of stretching? And he looked at me and just straight face, doesn't matter. And I was like. Okay, you're the dumbest smart person I've ever met. <laughs> and what right there's something being missed. How how can this not be important and matter to us? Whether you're an athlete or non athlete, it's gotta have some important value in it. And that kind of started my journey, you know, twenty one years of and I'm still not to a place where I feel confident enough, like, okay, I don't need to learn anymore. I I found it all. And um it's just been a long journey and meeting people like you and other professionals that have helped guide me to the place I'm at today. And, you know, and I feel like I'm just now starting to scratch the surface and, and now stretching, that. right. It's, it's turned into this huge industry that you see everywhere. And it's a, maybe know. a little bit, I don't know, popularized a little bit. Um, if that's a word, yeah. I think. Um, so I want to hear a little bit. Yeah, exactly. What tell us, you know, on a, on a daily basis, what is your job entail? Because I want people to get the full spectrum of what you do. Um, and you know, in talking to you, even 45 minutes to an hour, it's really clear that you go above and beyond picking someone's leg up and stretching them. Um, I, yeah. I mean, you'll get that in the first five minutes. So tell us a little bit about what else do you do um, with your clients to help them, as as you said, move better and feel better? Sure. So perfect example. Yesterday, um, got a guy, client. Um, he's about 60. You know, he's got a little bit of low back pain coming in. He wants to stretch, move better. Right. But he's also active, so he's also working out. And so 
part of my, you know, it's not just stretching your hamstring, it's, you know, really assessing what is not moving efficiently enough in your body that's causing you to move different and putting more stress and strain on your whole system, you know, as we call it, but layman's term, just your body. Right? Sure. Put more stress on your quad or your thigh or your hip or back, you know. For me, it's always just, I'm always just trying to pick and, well, well why? Why is that? Why is that? Why is your body doing that? Shouldn't be doing that. Should be moving in an efficient, normal manner. Sure. And so part of just the stretching, it's also, okay, well, what are your workouts? What exercises are you doing? Okay. Well, I'm doing squats. Oh, perfect. I love this. Let's see. Show me your squat. Let's see what's going on. You know, and they do their squat and I'll even film it so they can see how their body's moving. I can show them where, okay, this is where your body's struggling a little bit. And now you're putting more stress in your body and maybe why your back sore all the time. Right. And so then to those compensation that, patterns and, yeah. you know, where and zooming out and saying, well, you're thinking about your back, but I'm watching your hips your neck, yeah. your shoulders, your feet, um, feet especially yeah. is huge in squats. Um, but yep. yeah, all of those things. And I want everyone to kind of get that picture of what John does is he really zooms out, um, which I think is so important because any one thing we do to help someone move better is not going to be the goal end all be all. We need a right. lot of different stuff. Um, and yeah. sometimes it's more mobility. Sometimes it's more control. Um, and mm -hmm. I see it in my patients, you know, physical therapists, I think are really good at helping build control and strength. Yeah. What sometimes I think we're not so good at is building effective mobility in places um, because we, you know, there's some old school thoughts out there that, oh, stretching is just passive stretching. There's no benefit to it. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, so what do you think about that? Because I'm sure you hear that a lot. Like you heard it from the start of your career at 21. Someone said, ah, oh, yeah. it means nothing. Um, so what's your kind of counter argument to that? Like, you know, describe what, what stretch your version of stretching looks like. Cause I guys, I had it done by John when we went to met, meet him and it is not your typical, put your leg up and let me stretch your hamstring for 30 seconds. It, it's almost like a workout. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. For you too. Well, yeah. A little bit. I wish it was more so I didn't have to work out. Yeah. So, so now, you know, now we're diving deeper into what is, what is stretching? Is it really just the ability to pull your leg up to here and you just hold it? In my mind, no. Stretching is the ability to move in this three dimension world in our body. And so it's really, it's looking through these three planes of motion, where are you restricted? You know, everyone loves doing the hamstring stretch with their leg out to the side. Yeah. No one likes going across their body because that requires more internal rotation and more mobility in the hip. And if you like that, you're going to feel a much higher level of intensity and pull and strain and stretch. So that's really where I'm looking for where are people not moving as well. Okay. You know, and, and when we tell someone, Hey, show me your hamstring flexibility, they're either going to put their leg up on something or they're going to bend down to it. Sure. So what is that? That's a movement. So stretching is the ability to move. And so this is where I see right a static stretch, but you're not moving. How is that going to improve your ability to move by not moving? So let's let's introduce more movement into your joints, into your muscle tissue, your connective tissue to help facilitate when you get off. You actually move better. You're not just this one static position just holding it. Yeah, which... absolutely. And that's what I felt like was my biggest, ta biggest takeaway from being – you know, working with you, even that short amount of time is it's so much more active than other stuff that's available right now for people to stretch or quote unquote stretch. Yeah. Um, and I love that is that in order to move better, we have to move. <laughs> um, yeah. and that's part of it. 
Um, you know, we don't get better at moving by sitting still. I mean, there's, there's other aspects of, you know, lifestyle changes that we can do sitting still, but a majority of getting better at movement is movement. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we aligned about when we talked is just that, man, if we could just get this population to move a little bit more and get past that initial, oh, this doesn't feel so good when I move and how do we help people move better and feel better? I think we could solve a lot of problems. I don't know. What do you think? (laughs) Well, well, it's funny, isn't it? Like we, right, our country civilization has gone from being, right, massive movers, heavy labor, moving, moving now. But technology, we we move less. We sit here on a podcast on video. Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah. You know, we get out like, ah, I feel so stiff. I know. But it's just some, some things, you know, just to keep it simple, it's like, okay. We're not moving as much. We're tight, so we can't move as well. Now I'm going to go do something where I'm moving less, trying to, with the expectation that this is going to help me move more. Yeah. You know, and, and I've also been just talking, just right, how thinking differently of just, you know, what's more beneficial. You'd go home and stretch for 45 minutes once a day. Or how can we implement every half hour, every hour? You're just doing five minutes of moving, two minutes. Sure. Throughout the whole day, right? You just gained a half hour throughout the whole day of bringing movement into your whole body. I mean, it, right. it's got to be didn't better have to than schedule, You know, that yeah. you didn't have to schedule and add into your day somewhere. It's part of your routine. I, I love that. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about your clientele because it ranges, right? I mean, you described a client you had already, 60-year-old man working on his squats and his workouts, but tell us about yeah. some of your other clientele and kind of what, where across the spectrum are you helping them um, and what that looks like. Yeah, so two specific moments of this brought me where I am today. One is um, I did a, a little, uh, it was like a eight-week personal coaching uh, program, trying to, you know, what's my niche? Where am I going to go? What clients yeah. am I going to have? And I came out of that with, you know what? E- everybody needs this. So I'm not going to narrow myself down. So whatever opportunities, whatever people come in to my door that need help, I'm available and open to that. You know, as everybody needs it from grandma to kids. So that was a big experience for me and just let go of this expectation. It's, it's got to be this. I then, hear that so much. I think the the coach, you know, and, and for some rightful reasons, the coaching world always wants you to find a niche. And we yeah. are another brand that kind of said, man, we don't want to fit into one box. We want to do it all. We like to help all yeah. kinds of people. Yeah. So I hear that a lot. Sorry to interrupt you. Keep going. No worries. So the other big moment was I had an opportunity to go work with um a track team, one of the local high schools down here in Gilbert. So I went out there, you know, they're all warming up and I'm giving my spiel and you know, I'm trying to figure out a way to reach these kids to where they feel inspired and take action to, yeah, I need a stretch. So, <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, how many of you are going to go run in college? They just looked at me, no one raised their hand. I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a long hour. So then I was like, well, yeah. how many of you want to run? without pain, almost every kid raised their hand. I'm like, God, these are high school kids. Wow. That is. Pain's a big motivator, right? We all don't like to be in discomfort. Okay. So most of the people, 90, 90% that come into my office and see me, they're experiencing some form of discomfort. Okay. And on that, that ranges in level of intensity. Sure. Different levels of activity, but maybe, you know, they all have some version of discomfort. We're talking a mom who's carried around her two kids for the last three years and is just kind of rounded and she has neck pain. We're we're also talking, I know you work closely with professional athletes too, which obviously their activity is a lot more intense, a lot more frequent. Um, But so just different varying levels of activity, but still you're finding a common theme is discomfort. I'm that's kind of yeah. like an aha moment for me that um, you went to that 
that track club and and you had high school people telling you that they're yeah, all yeah. running with pain which is just like what yes. are we doing <laughs> if these right. high school kids have pain wh where's the hope for me and you know <laughs> in yeah, 30 so years that, and that also gave me a thought of uh, this was about six years ago of you know because my my niece and nephew they're now in high school and i always ask i'm always intrigued you know are you guys still doing the same stretching i did 30 years ago almost you know are you just doing this just grabbing your leg yeah pretty much and i was like man how how can we change that structure and provide something a little bit you know more, more valuable yeah you know across all the schools in the country and you know so i talked to some people about how to how can we implement that and they're all just kind of said the same thing it's just it's going to be a tough battle and you're going up against some big things to try and change that. Yeah, you are in, um, we're kind of getting into more detailed discussion here, but you are in the sports world. You see it a lot. Um, so yeah. tell me, because this is kind of my perspective is that, um, and what I tend to see is that people are in more organized sports. Um, there still is a lot of that traditional calisthenic type exercise, um, old school power lifting, which obviously there's benefits, um, yeah. you know, to movement in general and some of that power lifting, but I see a lot of old school movement patterns, a lot of old school stretching and stuff that really has been, you know, poo pooed a little bit by current research and, and experience. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. do you find that similarly yeah. or, um, what's, how have you kind of like navigated that? Because I, I do feel like it's, it's a little bit of a hurdle you have to overcome in that area. Yeah. I think it's a huge hurdle because one, right. It's you ask the coaches, you know, why, why are you stretching this way? You know, not putting you down or condemning you or criticizing, but just try to understand the mindset. And it's, well, this is what my coaches did with me and their coaches did with them, and, you know, or, we don't know what else to do that would be different. Yeah, so maybe along, it's an education thing. Big time, big time educating. Even with clients that come in, you know, they come in with the expectation, new client, that I'm just going to be holding their leg up for a hamstring stretch. And I they're told just gonna you. Be sitting yeah. there chilling for, you know, 30 <laughs> seconds, a minute, and they're breathing hard. Maybe sweating on the table. Oh, yeah. 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 And they're like, oh, that's not what I expected at all. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, we have to. We have to progress as we learn and understand more of how we move and what's going to help us, you know? Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, you know, when you stretch, yeah, you, you kind of hit an, an end point. Um, you know, there, there's not much you can do to progress if, you're, if we're just talking about passive stretching. Sorry, that's what I meant. But sure. um, I think when we're a little bit more active and dynamic, there's constant progression. We're constantly reevaluating movement patterns and biomechanics and things like that and compensation patterns. Um, and there's always areas where we can improve. Whereas if you're just doing that standard adductor or hamstring stretch, you know, you hit your end range and okay, I guess that's what we're yeah. doing for the next six weeks. We hold it for 30 <laughs> seconds and yeah. there it is. Yeah. There's not, I mean, beyond breaking your leg off, there's nothing else we can do yeah. there. So, you know, yeah. I think one of the benefits that I'd love for people to see with you and, and other practitioners like yourself is that take a little bit more of an active approach is that, yeah, there's room for improvement. <clears throat> there's always, there's always an ability to kind of either, you know, increase or maybe even sometimes it's control other areas of mobility um, that I think are important right. to getting faster, getting stronger, getting more crafty at your, your sport or your skill that you need. Um, and I think that there's a little bit more benefit to that with active rather than passive for sure. Yeah. Do you well, get a lot of, um, people in the yoga world who's, who also, obviously that's a very big mobility world as well. Um, you know, how are you different than that? And do you have maybe like some explanation of that or? Sure. Yeah. And I've had, a, I actually have um, right now two clients that they are actual yoga instructors. Oh, cool. That come in and see me, you know, 
and this is a conversation I have with them, you know, the biggest difference between what I do and yoga, right? I, I'm all for yoga. Yeah. Anything, anything that makes you move. I hey, love. we're all on the same team in terms of movement, in my opinion. Yeah. It's yeah, all the, about collaboration too, and kind of using all these yeah. these areas together. So, okay, sorry, interrupt. Keep going. No worries. The, right, everything has a right, it's a double edged sword. It's got its benefit, but then there's also the con to it. And um, the downside is um, that I have seen and talked with colleagues that are been yoga practitioners for 15, 20 years is you're treating both limbs the same. Right. If you're stretching hamstrings, same position, there's not much tweaking of each side to give it what it needs, you know. And so sometimes, you know, say like in a, a warrior pose, well, maybe your back foot needs to be turned in a little bit more or turned out more than it does the other leg when you switch. Sure. But you're being fit into a mold of, well, this is the pose. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what you have to do. Well, not everyone fits into that box. Right. Know? Right. So with anything. And, and sometimes yeah. some people will never fit into that exact yeah. pose box either. You know, structurally, anatomically, they're, they're built different. Um, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Had, so a so, little bit more on that. Um, yeah. I had one of my former teachers and mentors, they were telling me, a story about a Tai Chi teacher they had. And this Tai Chi teacher was always doing a move where they were doing this. And I guess their master came up and said, are you teaching the art of smoking? Because the move is this direction. But they were a smoker, so their habit moved into their practice. And now they're teaching everyone the same thing. Wow. So that story, always it always stuck with me. And so... One of my yoga practitioner friends, I asked them on one of the certain moves, I said, you know, why are the feet turned this direction biomechanically? That's how you create a sprained ankle. And if you have a sprained ankle, now you're just destabilizing the lateral ligaments even more. You know, if you turn the feet more external, it allows for better biomechanical movement in that ankle structure, foot structure. And he did, and he was like, oh, yeah, that's a lot better. He goes, you know, I, I don't know. And I was like, is the person that created that pose, did they do that because they had a restriction? You know, That's a great where point. Did that, where did it come from? And he was like, yeah, I, I don't know. So I, just, I kind of thinks about those things, you know, where, where did we develop these moves and patterns? Was it our own restriction that created it and we did that and now we teach everyone? You know. No, and I know you got me thinking like, what am I teaching my patients? Because I, <laughs> because yeah, I, right? I have restrictions of my own. I'm like, I, maybe I should be doing some of these things in a mirror and checking myself out yeah. every once in a while. Um, yeah. Well, it was yeah, a big one that, that I experienced, um, the school I learned stretching from stretch to win. Um, yeah. I taught for them for eight years, Uh huh. you know, and so it was, it's a very hands-on class. So we're, demoing to the student and then they're doing it. And so one of the things us fellow teachers always talked about is make sure your bad habits aren't carrying over to your instruction because the students are watching and they imitate exactly what you do. You know, if your shoulder's bothering you and you're having a certain way, the students all do the same thing just because they're yeah, watching. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. Always- and a lot of times people haven't, learned these movement patterns before, you know, I find myself in scenarios a lot where I'm teaching patients what I feel like are, are simple functional movement patterns that we use every day, but for whatever reason, you know, habitually they move differently and they haven't experienced that, you know, uh, some type of lumbopelvic control or pelvic tilts, um, are, that's a big one. I mean, people, not that they're the end all be all, but if we're just assessing mm-hmm. posture and movement patterns, a lot of people have very, uh, a very difficult time isolating that area and moving it. Um, and it's, yeah. again, you think it's simple, but it's not for some people. And so you're right. They probably are just glued in to what they're mm-hmm. looking at. Cause a lot of people are visual learners. And if yeah. you're demonstrating something with an asymmetry, they're, they're probably likely to, to pick that up. 
Yeah, and they go home and they're like, yeah, I was doing what you showed me. It's just, I don't know, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and they show you and you're like, why'd you do it like that? That's what you did. <laughs> yeah, you're like, like, maybe oh, I did. Oh oh. Um, yeah. Well, super interesting. Um, tell me a little bit about how you um, kind of, how you, do you still use teaching a lot in your practice? I mean, obviously you're teaching your patients. Are you involved in any kind of teaching programs or I know that used to be part of your practice? Um, currently I am not now. Okay. And that's just with clients. Well, that, I think that's, that's teaching in itself for sure. Yeah. You know, well, that's a, right. One of my big things is, you know, look, you live with yourself 24 seven. You have to, I want to empower you to know how to take care of yourself. Right. If you can do that, you know, right, you can help a lot more people. And then they can even, I have clients now, they even help their, their family members. Hey, well, John said to do this, try that. And they'll call me up or text me. Hey, I had my, you know, my spouse or my girlfriend, my boyfriend try and do this. Is that good? Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect. You know, I know. I love that. I, I think that is the ultimate form of flattery. When you hear from someone that they have taught what you told them to someone else, because yeah. obviously yeah. that means they respect you. The other thing it means is that you've done a great job. Well, hopefully at explaining it to them and describing it and showing them that they feel confident enough to move in that way to show other people. I love that. I always think that's like yeah. the highest form of flattery from a patient. I mean, don't get me wrong. We'll take the positive testimonials and reviews, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, right? sometimes yeah. those little anecdotal stories are like the best indicators of your um, value as a practitioner, I think, um, because yeah, our goal, you know, I tell people as a physical therapist, I don't want you to see me every week for the rest of your life. I want you to see me for the shortest amount of time that is possible for you to get the most effective dose of treatment. Um, and as yeah. soon as you achieve that, I want you to go and use what you've learned, um, yeah. you know, to be part of your own life and daily routine, but also to show other people. Um, because yeah. we need a little bit of that education. Like you said, it's not mainstream stuff anymore. Unfortunately, the quick no. fixes are the mainstream stuff in yeah. our healthcare world. So we yeah. need a little bit of that, you know, sharing is, is caring method when it comes to Abs health. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's so much, so much confusion out there from the social media platforms and you know, clients come in, well, I, I saw someone doing this and, you know, there's just, that's the biggest challenge is how do we get the education out so people can understand and even critically think yes. about things, you know, yeah. with that, a, a big one I see is clients tell me about, oh yeah, I'm using the foam roller and I'm always like, okay, okay. Are you, are you making ugly faces when you do it? Oh yeah, it hurts so bad. I'm like, okay, let's think about this. <laughs> what does pain do? It causes you to tense up. Right. Now you're trying to make an area looser by tensing up. Just, and they look at me, oh, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, yeah, you got to go easy. You know. It's, it's yeah, no, work. that's a good good point. We found your, your vendettas, foam rollers, I guess. So I'll just have to note that down. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but so I, I agree. I, I'm not a big user of foam rollers myself um, because of yeah. that. One, it's not comfortable. And so often, or the way that I'm doing it is not the most comfortable. And I think there's yeah. other ways that are a little bit more relieving or um, valuable in terms of pain management. Some people swear by them. I always say, hey, if it if hey. it's something that creates pain-free movement for you, awesome. Yeah. If, yeah, if Whether it. that is, you know physically or mechanically, or if it's by placebo effect, I'm all for all of it. Um, yeah. that's all that matters that you're feeling better. And if that's part of it, great. Um, I yeah. haven't found a lot of benefit. What, what's your, um, what's your thoughts on these new Theragun tools and massage gun tools? Massage what do you guns? Think about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and no pressure. I mean, I'm, I'm just no, curious. They're everywhere. Everyone has yeah. one. You know, it, the biggest thing that I see, it just makes things easier. Yeah. You know, especially for clients that don't know really how to use a foam roller effectively to where they get optimal um, results from it. Yeah. The little massage gun, 
They're like, oh, yeah, this is so much easier. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and use it. I know. I feel the same way. I have patients, you know, in their 70s that, oh, hey, let me, let me show you what I got here. And they whip out a Theragun or, or the <laughs> yeah, massage one. Yeah. I'm like, awesome. Let's show you how yeah. to use it because you're going to be doing that more than you're going to be doing yeah. these exercises, mobility exercises that I'm giving you. Do yeah. I think they're a replacement for those? Absolutely not. I, I'm yeah, betting you tool. agree there. But yeah, I think it's a great tool. Um, there's some comfort in it. I mean, there's research studies to back up that vibration therapy and input is yeah. helpful, um, sensory speaking, and then also for you know neuromotor feedback as well. Um, so I think if it helps with buy-in to feel better yeah. to move, uh, it's another tool. Just like the foam yeah. roller, but I, I totally, that's a, another perspective I'm going to start using with my patients about the, the tensing up and, and why that might yeah. not be the most beneficial for, if, especially if you're having mobility issues or tightness right. as a symptom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I want to have some, a, a little bit of fun at the end here. I'm going to just kind of like ask you some, yeah. I don't know, not totally fun questions. They probably won't be that fun. Maybe a little boring, but um, just a little less intense questions. But what is something you would never tell a client in terms of movement or, um, you know, lifestyle change or anything like that? What would you never tell someone i've never told them they suck <laughs> hey that's great that's important <laughs> yeah that was that was the oh, boy i just wouldn't do that <laughs> pretty bad at that okay no, I, oh man i would not um one um crunches okay i gotta you know, hear some... standard laying on laying on the floor doing sit-up crunches you know and this this is information i learned from uh, dr Stuart mcgill the low back professional professor and biomechanic guy up in, uh, I believe he teaches at Ottawa university. Okay. He's been around. I mean, his, so he came up with stir the pot. Uh huh. Um, I've heard that. Yep. You know, and his research just showed the amount of compression shearing in the spinal vertebrae and stuff and discs when we do those types of flexions. And so those Repeated. Ones, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, the big one is, um, uh, you know, a lot of people have a hard time with this one is walking is not an exercise. It's not a workout. And they look yeah. at you like, what? What do you mean? It's my main thing for working out. I'm like, no, nah, it's not a workout. We're designed to walk. We are made to walk miles and miles. If it was a workout, then everyone would be fit. We wouldn't have to go running and hiking. You know, it just doesn't get your heart rate up enough to facilitate that type of reaction. Yeah, that's... I think maybe the only exception to that is if we're dealing with someone who for the last six months has been in bed rest or in a seated position only. Sure. Right. So, but I totally agree with you that in order yeah. to see change, whether we're yeah. talking strength, endurance, aerobic capacity, um, yeah. you know, VO2 max, all of those things, we have to train above our baseline. If we don't right. train above our baseline, we're not, yeah. we're wasting our time. Essentially. It yeah. might be great for your mental health and quality yeah. of life in terms of that. And there's benefits for that as well. Absolutely. Um, and is something better than nothing? Yes. But if your goal yeah. is any of those one things that we're discussing, um, you know, like strength or endurance, aerobic capacity, yeah. then yeah, you have to train above your baseline. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay. Next heart. question. Um, so yeah. real quick, uh, last one I tell people not to do soft yeah. stretching your hamstring. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had to get Stop. a stretching one in there. Please. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was waiting. Them. Right. Focus on the quads waiting. and the hip flexors. And they're like, what? Yes. Like, yeah. The hamstrings are over abused. Leave them alone. Okay. You heard it from John, everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, another fun one. What okay. is the last thing you did for fun that included movement? The last thing I did for fun that included movement, I'd have to say uh, wrestling with my kids. Love it. Who won? Yeah. Uh, the kids do. Yeah, <laughs> every well, time. Every, <laughs> yep, every time. And then, uh, you know, we have two uh, soft coated Wheaton Terriers. Okay. They're actually. One's asleep on the couch here and the other one's asleep oh, nice. over here. They're joining. So they usually, it's the kids and the dogs all tackling me and jumping up on me. I love it. 
Um, how, how do you get your kids involved in movement? I think this is a great question just outside of being a practitioner as a, as a parent, yeah. what do you do? What have you done to kind of show them and teach them the ways a little bit? Yeah, this is a really great point and question because I think all of us parents today are encountering something different than what we did as kids with our parents, which is the technology. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've heard quite a few other trainers and stuff on podcasts talking about this, like now everything's got to be like structured and um, scheduled activity time Yeah. versus when we were kids, we just went out and played. And so free play is down like oh. gobs of percentages. I know I've yeah. read some studies. Yeah. Free play is scrolling on the screen. I know it's yeah. tough. So what do you do? What, how do you incorporate it? You know, what's, what's a few ways that you kind of teach your kids about movement? Obviously you're a movement guy and an activity yeah. guy and a health guy. So what's, what's your strategy? My strategy is just to take them outdoors and talk to the importance of how moving is going to help us. You know, I grew up out in the hunting, fishing, camping, so hiking, so that's what I'm going to take my kids to go do. And then when they start struggling with it, well, here's, here's kind of a teaching moment. Here's what happens when we just sit on the couch and play games all the time. We don't move it. It uh, impedes our ability to enjoy these things. And now it's a struggle and we don't like it. Cause we're yeah. not in shape. I like that. Um, so kind of like a lead by example method and then yeah. using those moments where, you know, ah, oh, it doesn't feel very good to go do that to kind of bring up a conversation yeah. about it. And this is why we do it. And, you yeah. know, I think also we don't give kids enough credit at, to a, at a certain age is it, they can listen to a logical discussion. You know, they can understand when we describe to them why this is beneficial you know, I, yeah. I think there's an innate sense in all of us that we want to feel good and, and not have pain mm-hmm. and things like that, as we talked about before. And I think kids, we don't give them enough credit sometimes that if we just kind of educate them over time and verbally, yeah. but also leading by example, I think there's a lot to that. Um, but I agree with you. It's so hard. I, I see a lot of pediatric patients and um, I hear the same thing with other parents. It's just that, man, it's it's tough to do this. And then the other yeah. thing it's tough with is like, like we talked about, there's less free play time because yeah. I feel like there's so much over scheduling of other stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I can't even believe my own schedule sometimes. And then I hear people talk about their their children's schedules. And I think, whoa, um, when's their time to kind of learn and explore and explore movement in that way too. Um, you know, I think that there's something to that too, that we're we're missing out on. Absolutely. I see it just within my own family, you know, they run to practices and then to games and got to run right. We live in a big Valley. So like my, um, my niece, she plays softball. Mm Mm-hmm. So we live in the far Southeast Valley. She has games in the far West Valley. Well, that's an hour drive. So now let's get home from school, hurry, let's leave, get there on time and then rush, get back. Totally. And now it's, you know, midnight and it's like, man, like, yeah. So and then you're like, we crazy. haven't slept enough, you know, it's yeah. a whole thing. Yeah. Um, and you and I could probably also talk about how important sleep is. I know you are believe in sleep quality too it is super important yeah. for not only just healing but overall longevity yep. um, especially after i had kids i learned how yeah. important it is i was like <laughs> man like, <laughs> wow. that sleep thing yeah. was really yeah. underrated before and now yeah, big time. I, now i drink yeah. now i drink caffeine i'm like oh huh. yeah it's not such a bad thing <laughs> i know totally um Okay. And then I want to hear last, last fun question. Then we'll kind of wrap things up, but, um, two things you're excited about for the rest of 2022. The rest of 2022, um, one's more of on a personal note. My daughter turned six and we're taking her to Disneyland for fun. Her in October. So it's that like the Halloween deal. Oh, so, fun. Yeah. Is this first yeah. time? Uh, it'd be her first time. Yeah. Oh, fun. That'll so, be great. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And then um, December, I'm going elk hunting. So I've got, right now, I'm in my next phase of training to get ready for that. Okay. Um, and what's so that more- physical training, right? Like, cause, because. Yeah. So just got done with a week long elk uh, deer hunt. And so now I'm moving more into a hypertrophy training phase. 
for the next, I'm doing a six week and then I'll do a six week strength phase leading up to that. So it's just I, motivation to keep working out. I feel like there's a, there's a business opportunity in there, John, you are going to be the next, uh, program writer for hunters. Um, oh, I think that there's a lot of physical physicality to hunting that people don't, um, anticipate. And so maybe that's, maybe that's there a new is. niche. Although we talked about, we don't like niches, but, um, no. I, I don't know. I, I see line. an opportunity. If I, if I look at one, I see it more on the mobility aspect, things to prepare yourself mobility, stability wise, while sure. being outdoors. Cause right, we forget about that. It's back yeah. to stretching is on the back burner. Yeah. I may do that. It's, I got to do my cardio. I got to do my weights. Forget about stretching. And professionally, I know you got, you have some, some cool clients right now. Are you able to share who you're, who you're working with? Um, we can cut this part out if you need to. I do. I, you know, I'm, I don't like talking about myself. Like I like being the, the, um, the underdog. Um, but this year just through teaching and just, uh, been exposed to some really great people that have open doors to allow me to work with some professional athletes. And so like this year, I've got the entire starting line of, uh, one of the football teams here in the country. And so it's just, it's just a different dynamic than working with regular clients. You know, it's, it's just, it's what's still so cool equally fun, equally Absolutely. great, but yeah, yeah, what a fun opportunity. And, and I know that you're a humble guy and I'm the same way as I don't like to brag about those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important, John, you have, you have so much experience and so much to offer people. I think you are such a humble individual too, in the way that you're able to educate people and teach people. I mean, I, told the listeners already how much I learned from just a short conversation with you and short session with you. Um, but I, I think don't sell yourself short on that. That's really exciting. Um, and yeah. definitely a nod to, um, kind of your persistence in, in your own values and beliefs about movement and how to incorporate stretching into, you know, like we talked about that sporting world. So really awesome. Yeah. Big congratulations on that. Um, I well, think thank that's you. really great. Um, Again, not to take away from your other clients, like we talked about, they're always just fun. No. That's the greatest part about our job is we get to work with a little bit of everyone. And I yeah, learned something yeah. from all my patients. Um, but yeah. cool opportunity. I bet your kids love that too, love hearing about that. Um, they do. My my little daughter has a little cheerleading outfit. She oh, wears. I love it. Yeah, I it love is. it. Thank well, John, thank you so much for being here. Before we end, I want you to just tell us where we can find you um, here in the Valley. Um, if people are interested yeah. in sessions with you, where can they find out more information about you? Uh, you can go to my website. That's www.stretchtherapy-az.com. Um, I do have an Instagram account. I haven't posted anything on there for two years since COVID kind of just Good for you. Step away from that, but it's um, I'm the flexibility guy on there, and um, yeah, or you can text me four eight zero three eight eight six two four one. You can text me anytime. Um, you can email me John Lemke at Hotmail. Yes, I still use Hotmail. My friends <laughs> give me crap about These that. Are <laughs> the original holdouts. I love it. Yeah, I was like, you know, I love how you call back. your own self about that. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I know. you know, everything goes there. I'm not changing it now, whatever. I'm with you, though. The thought of changing over email accounts is just, uh, they're everywhere now. It's a bit be yeah. a pain. So you yeah. heard it. John Lemke at hotmail.com, right? That's J-O-N. There's no H. Yes. Yes. The Important to know. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John. I'm excited for you, listeners Amy. to hear this one. Um, and again, learned even more just talking to you in this short amount of time. Hopefully we get to connect again in person soon. Um, but Absolutely. if you are interested, check out the show notes. Um, they will have some highlights from our conversation today. And then as always, where you can find John um, through his website, phone number and other contact information. All right. Thanks so much, John. Thank you.